Today we have an exciting day because I am in Hilo, uh, which is a city here in our area. And uh, I'm here doing a few errands and I wanted to show you something that's very cool about our area, which is that people grow food all over the place. Today I'm in uh, kind of a, it's like an industrial area. There's a lot of like warehouses and there's a lumber yard and some repair, car repair places. It looks like this. There's a boat repair establishment, I believe. And right here next to behind this fence with a little bit of barbed wire is this tree. Do you know what this fruit is? It is not oranges. The only way that you can really tell is because of this sad situation down here. Yes, these are pomelos. If you've never had a pomelo, they're kind of similar to a grapefruit. Sadly, these are all on the ground here. This is what the tree looks like. There's a bunch more in there, as you can see. A lot of pomelos. Here's what the leaves look like. Here's some more. So I'm gonna be walking around this neighborhood. I have a little bit of walking to do and I'm gonna stop at a few places and show you some of the food that's growing on the side of the road because there's a lot of it. And if you know what to look for, you can see how many resources there are available everywhere. So I'll be back in a little bit with the next section of the video. Just around the corner from where we were, you can see Mauna Kea over there in the distance, beautiful mountain. Here is a street tree. This is a coconut loaded with coconuts up there. Coconuts provide both food and fresh drinking water. So this is a nice healthy one. I see it's got a bunch of nice green coconuts up there. Only thing is be careful when walking underneath it. You don't want a falling coconut to hit you in the head. All right, onwards. We have turned another corner and now find ourselves at this tree, which is in front of this little shop. And what this tree is, is called a Malabar chestnut. They have a sort of five point, five point leaf. I believe it's called palmate. Let's see it. It's like a hand. And Malabar chestnuts, the actual nuts, come in this pod like this and the pod will eventually break open and inside there will be a handful of nuts that look like this and you can eat them either raw or cooked I found this one see this one's already opening a little bit let's see if we can open it. the shell is very soft let's see what we got in here Ah, this one started going bad. But last time I came here, actually, I was here and noticed this tree just a little uh, few days ago when I was last in Hilo. And I picked a bunch of the nuts off the ground and brought them home and a bunch of them were edible. They were great. And you can see, there's a, I only see like one pod up in the sky right now. But look at all, these are babies. So the, uh, you know, the seeds would drop and then they land in here. Eventually in moisture, the big pods break open. They fall apart. Here is like a shell of one of those pods. And then eventually the seed also with moisture breaks open, allowing the baby to come out. And you can see here it is. Here's a baby. You can see that same five-point leaf structure. And there it is. There's where the shell was. And it came out of the seed from there. So this is how they grow. So now I know if I ever find myself in Hilo and I need a few free nuts, this is where I can go. Look, you can see it. Here's one, the little green part starting to come up. Here too, little green part starting to come up. So here's another little baby plant. Look at how many babies this tree has made. Truly remarkable. 
these plants we we have a few of these that we grow they're actually very nice because uh, like many other nut trees uh, you know they provide their own nitrogen they grow, they kind of well actually I'm gonna say I'm not sure about that so don't hold me to that but these definitely grow in some kind of crappy conditions which is great for us because we have poor soil so now you know what to look for when you see one of these trees you can say oh is this a malabar chestnut maybe here's another bit of the pod that fell here's another looks like it still has some of that pod stuff so I'm gonna stop for now and see if I can find a few more of these to take home even though I guess I got most of them last time <laughs> all right next time we will stop at whatever the next destination is the next plant we find see you then growing on a corner intersection just about half a block down from the Malabar chestnut amidst rock and weeds is this small friend. Do you know who this is? It can be a little hard to tell. Yes, that's right. It is a tiny noni tree. Noni. You maybe have had noni extract or seen it or heard of it in the health food store. This is the plant that it comes from. The amazing thing is that this is a very small guy, maybe not even two feet tall, and it's making fruit. So noni fruit is not great to eat. Uh, this is still unripe. Uh, it's actually considered ripe. There's one guy down here. It turns sort of waxy and yellow white, and it starts to smell like rotting cheese. That's when it's ripe. It does not taste good. It tastes bad. I can guarantee that. I have tried. But it is food, the, and the, you know, you can ferment it. Uh, noni, I know people who ferment it and they swear by that extract. And when it's fermented, it's, you know, very healthy, full of nutrition. I know people who make tea from the leaves. I know it has many anti-inflammatory properties. Noni is a canoe plant. It was, has many medicinal uses. And my favorite thing about it is that it grows in deeply, deeply suboptimal conditions like this an industrial area corner uh, just in the middle of some rocks it also grows on uh, fresh lava flow people plant it and uh, it does well kind of by the ocean where a lot of other food plants don't really like to go and it can be fine in full sun so you know it's still still a winner still a winner and one question that I've had when I show people sort of food trees growing in places like this is, did it grow wild or did someone plant this? And I would say someone planted it. I don't know who, I don't know when, I don't know why, but someone planted it. These kinds of food plants don't usually grow in the wild on their own. Someone at some point planted it. So, but there it is. I don't know if they're still taking care of it, I don't need any noni right now, but now you know. All right, onward to the next one. Oh, one thing, that right there, that's a coconut too. You can see them hanging over there. Coconuts. All right, till next time, I'll be back. Our next stop is another coconut. Here is the area that we're in. It's uh, between this warehouse type building and this fence. This one is particularly nice because this variety is not very tall. And basically these coconuts are at a height where you can just reach them, which is very special. These look great. I'm sure someone is using these. Another coconut. Oh, one question I've gotten about palms is uh, do all palms make coconuts? The answer is no. There are many, many different kinds of palms. Only coconut palms make coconuts. This is what they look like. So beautiful. Also good at growing by the ocean. Beautiful leaves used for many things. Extremely large leaves. Fibrous. You can use them to make clothes. You can use them to make 
shoes. You can use them to make thatch for roofs. Many purposes. Thank you to the wonderful coconut. All right, onward along the big highway in town. There's loads of cars and it's super loud, so I'm gonna go really fast. This is, it's just in front of someone's house. First of all, look at this amazing gourd that they have growing on this vine here. Look at that beauty. That thing has got to be over five pounds. This is a beautiful plant which you may have seen as an ornamental because it has these beautiful leaves. But it is called a banana canna. It also makes really pretty flowers, which you can see here. And it's called the banana canna. It is related to other kinds of canna plants. And the root is edible. It can be boiled and apparently it tastes like banana. I've never had it, but this is a real multi-use plant because it's beautiful and also has an edible root. Again, they have loads. They have these beautiful trellises for their gourds. And down here, we'll notice, based on this leaf shape, this is sweet potato, which has both edible leaves and roots, which is the sweet the potato part. So just even outside, they have this, uh, this wall to block off from all this noise, which you're hearing, but even just right outside the wall along the sidewalk they have these wonderful food plants i'm not about to take them but it's good to know they're here good to know that people are growing them all right oh and across the street at the hydroponics store over there they've got a couple little stands of banana out front i'm not crossing this horrible highway to go look at them but also good to know they're there all right i'll be back our next stop is Hawaiian Fresh Products, Inc. here on this busy street. And they've got two papaya trees growing here with papayas at the top. You can see them like right there under the main canopy there. Yeah, papaya trees. Hot day today, very hot day. Welcome back to the farm everyone. I'm back from Hilo and uh, it's actually much, much time has passed since uh, the last video because I've been thinking about how to end it and I've been thinking, so why is it good and important to know in an urban area what food trees are around you? Because it's like, you can't eat someone else's fruit, right? That's, you shouldn't do that. I know some people do. I do it sometimes, but you shouldn't. It's not, not polite. So what, what's the point, right? You're not going to eat their, you're not going to eat their, their fruit and vegetables from their tree. But I think that there is a value to knowing what trees are around you in general. You never know. Something might happen. Maybe whoever is the tenant at that warehouse that has a coconut tree, maybe they move out and then it's empty. And next time you walk by, you're like, dang, it's been empty for a while. I bet no one would mind if I had a coconut. So then you could, you know, participate. That's, and also if you're in an emergency, right? Who knows what can happen in the, the future? Who knows? So if you're in an emergency situation, you know, coconut has water all these other things, that's food, right? Um, you might say, well, you live in Hawaii. You don't live in New Jersey or wherever. New Jersey is a place I think about with a lot of urban areas, maybe doesn't have uh, so many food trees on the street, but maybe it does. Maybe you just don't know what they are. So that's why I think it's important to start just looking around, looking around your area, places you go on a daily basis, see if you know any of the trees. Uh, I only got started getting into learning what the trees around me were when I moved here. Um, I knew some trees when I lived in California and 
almost nothing when I lived in North Carolina or Chicago, which is where I grew up. So, uh, and that's, that's kind of a shame because I go, I go to, you know, if I visit someone, family or something in the East Coast, like, I don't know any of the trees that are around there. And it's a little, it's a little disorienting because in this area, I know, I can, I can guess what a lot of the trees are. Um, and so, but the very first step in learning is to start looking around. Just look around and say, hmm, I wonder what that tree is. Oh, that's, you know, like in Chicago, there are a lot of maples. That's a tree I know. Oh, I know what a maple is. Oh, I know what an oak is. But start learning what the other trees are. And maybe you'll find out, oh, this has a, you know, branches can be used for something, something. Or the bark is used for something, something. Or the leaves can be made into tea. Like, you don't know all the different ways that plants can be used. Um, because it's not just food. It's all kinds of things. Um, and if you live in an area where you don't know a lot of the trees and other plants, uh, the kind of book you can get is called a field guide. I don't know if you, you've ever used one of those, but it'll be something like Chicago street trees field guide or like Northern trees of Northern Illinois, you know, something like that. You can get a book like that and it'll have pictures and you can start practicing, see which trees you can identify. And if you don't like that field guide, get a different field guide. You can also, probably there's YouTube videos identifying common trees of your area, whatever that area might be. So I just recommend everyone to start learning about the trees in their area. Because also maybe you'll go to visit someone's house and you'll see their garden. You'll say, oh, you've got that tree. Oh, that's nice. You know, and you can add to your mental map of like where food exists <laughs> in your area. That's always what I go to. Like I have this mental map where I'm like, yeah, if anything really happens, I can go to that neighbor and I know they have that kind of tree. And I know I can go to that neighbor and I know they have that kind of tree. And also I know that they don't have that kind of tree. So if I come into, if I happen to get a large amount of apples and I know my friend doesn't have an apple tree, I can call that friend up and be like, oh, you want some apples? You know, I got a whole bunch. People love stuff like that. I just gave away a bunch of food from food I found on the side of the road. Neighbors are so happy. So happy. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. <laughs> this wasn't food I grew, just so y'all know. So anyway, start learning about trees. That's all. That's all. If, you, if you're not very familiar with trees, maybe you are very familiar with trees. And for that, more power to you. Keep on keeping on. But that's why I like to pay attention to trees because you never know. Also, maybe one day you can get some seeds or a cutting if it's the type of tree that grows from a cutting or maybe there's a baby tree and you might be able to say, oh, this tree has a bunch of babies. Maybe I can have one, right? Maybe they won't miss them. Maybe they're going to come in and mow next month and then that baby tree will be gone. Or maybe you see some of the seeds sprouting. Another thing is that trees look different at different stages of their growth. Like, you might say, maybe I'd be able to identify an adult version of that tree, but I don't know what the baby version of that tree looks like. And it's actually very handy to know what trees look like at different stages of their life. I saw a baby papaya tree growing in a strip mall parking lot, like in the grass. Maybe a bird dropped the seed or someone was eating a papaya near there and lost the seed. I don't know. But it's like, can you imagine what kind of a superpower it is if you could look around and see baby trees that, that you know are food trees? It's a superpower. I'm working on it myself. So anyway, that's about all that I have for now. It's ended up going really long, so thank you for staying with me. Maybe now I'll enjoy a snack. You can't see this, but these are my some Malabar chestnuts that I got from a street tree in Hilo. They were on the ground. I didn't have to go over a fence or anything. And look how easy they are to open. So I really love that about these nuts. Look, I'm doing it with one hand. I'm so talented. Oh yeah, I'll get the rest of that, don't worry. They can be eaten raw. Ooh, Malabar chestnut. They have an interesting shape. Mmm, thank you tree. See you next time.